Welcome to the Blade Runner 2049 Baseline Scanner Kit Tutorial. If you enjoy this content, have a look through the links provided in the description to visit the other Blade Runner replicas, the hand scanner, and the classic Voigt Kampf machine. In this tutorial, we're taking this set of kit parts and building them into a fully completed wall-ready museum display piece. This will be a very easy build-up because there are absolutely no seam lines on any of these parts. There will be a little bit of joining we'll have to do between this part and that part on the main vertical scanner. Let me overview this kit for you. We have the vertical scanner in two pieces, the main body. The top of your vertical scanner is comprised of these three parts. This piece is designed with a little groove. I engineered a little groove in there when I was modeling this so that scanner piece fits in there nice and flush. Additionally, the top and bottom of the main body have these insets that will allow these rails to seat in so there's no guessing where these guys go. This is the rear of the main body. This little opening is directly underneath where the light will go and there's a little cavity molded in to each kit that allows for a 9 volt battery to nest right in here, enough room for your clip on off switch, wiring, plenty of space. We have the lens housings, the top and the bottom. Your rails, these are little insets, laser cut, that will sit inside of these openings. This googly eye is used for the medium sized lens, the big vacuform lens is used on the large lens, and the little googly eye is used for the tiny lens. Also included in your kit is a 3D printed lens cover piece. These are laser cut texture for inside of the lens pieces so instead of looking at a big flat open space now I've got these nice little laser cut pieces for providing something interesting behind those lenses. Let's get this party started with painting the two rails and the two lens rings silver. These are your three lens housings. Make sure that you're painting them right side up. There's a little bit of a curve on the tops of these. So just make sure that curve is facing up, flat black. These are your three other lens pieces. This is what the LED will sit behind, and these are little insets that go on the flats of your lenses. Instead of painting them black, I've got sort of a charcoal, a dark charcoal color. So I'm gonna paint these just to give a little bit of color variations. Not everything is black inside. These will be just a little bit lighter. This vertical scanner topper is also flat black. The vertical scanner is two parts, a top and a bottom. Just a little bit of CA will adhere these guys and then we can fill in the gaps. This is the filler I like to use, Evercoat Gold. Uh, I'll put links. I've got an affiliate program with Amazon, and I'll put links to all the products I'm using in the video description. I'm going to go ahead and trowel on this filler. You might see why I prefer using this over straight Bondo. It goes on much smoother. I mentioned earlier in one of my other tutorials that this stuff goes on like gravy. That took about 10 minutes of sanding. I'm going to blow this guy off and then we're going to give it a coat of white primer. See if there's any areas that need a little bit more filler. Now before I base coat these, I want to give everything a really fine sanding. 500 grit paper. Let's get a nice little polish going on. I'll be installing an LED into that main camera eye. So I've already got a starter hole that's cast into this piece. I'm going to continue that hole all the way through. That allows enough room for a LED to shine through. Then I'm going to line up this piece to where it needs to be. There's a little bit of a space here, there's a little bit of a space there. I'm going to mark that off and continue the hole through the body. Okay, I've got a good pass through, through both pieces now, for that light to illuminate that lens. 
The last step before painting is making sure your parts are debris free, dust free. And giving every piece a nice little scrub in soapy water. A little warm water with a few drops of Dawn is enough of a detergent to get like all your um, finger oils off. Make sure you have a really nice clean prepped surface. Before I get to any kind of assembly, I want to get these guys all base coated white. I've got some Tamiya loaded into my high volume airbrush. And I'm just going to get all of these things bright white. I'm going to start doing some assembly before I clear coat, but I'm going to clear coat before I drop in my lens cans. So the assembly is this guy glues right onto that corner, flush to the corner. And this one comes in lining up with that LED hole. I'll also be super gluing these laser cut inset pieces. Instead of having to paint inside of these recesses, I engineered little inserts that lay right inside here. No painting necessary and they're perfect because if you look at the film used piece they're white. These walls are white on the inside. Black only at the bottom. Alright, here it is at this stage. It's all one piece now. You can see how really nice those inset pieces just set off that whole detail. The next thing I'm doing is gluing this to that and you'll see that it's slightly undersized to that rim so it gives you a little bit of a step. We're not gluing this on here yet. I want this to be gloss I want this to be flat, but you'll see when it comes time that there's a little pocket there that that fits right inside. There's no guesswork as to what the center is. It's already engineered for you. Here we go with a glossy top coat. I am using an automotive enamel. Got my HVLP gun out. I've got a new desiccant cartridge installed and I am ready to go. I've got this on a rotating platform and let's go ahead and get this guy glossy. And the other piece glossy. I want this ultra, ultra glossy. So I'm going to let these tack up for about 10 minutes between coats. Do about three coats. While that gloss coat is out there curing, I'm going to spend some time putting these lenses together. I'm going to start uh, small to larger. So here's the smallest ring and here is the 3D lens array. Really tiny little part. This is made to pressure fit inside of here. I just want to push it in. You can see what I'm doing here. Just about like that. And I'll seal that in with a little bit of CA. Okay, so there's this. Now the lens, the clear lens for this is harvested out of a googly eye. And to get that lens separated, just very carefully I'm going to exacto blade that paper away and I'll sand it, sand the, uh, the edges down and that will glue straight on top of there to make the little lens bubble. Before I put that lens on, this ring that surrounds this is silver. Now with the second largest lens, there's no painting necessary. That silver ring that we did at the beginning of the tutorial goes on the top of that. And the lens is also another googly eye, a larger size. Let's do the same thing. Just use an X-Acto, trim this out. If you have a belt sander, you can hold this down to the sander. makes it a lot quicker. Trim it so that it fits just inside of that ring. We'll be doing the same thing with the larger size lens. Again, no painting necessary. We've got that silver ring from earlier. Acrylic laser cut ring. And the lens for this guy is this vacuformed PETG. Okay, that just took a minute on the belt sander. Here's our lens. And 
it will fit right inside of that ring. And I recommend using a epoxy, like a five minute epoxy. Try not to use super glue. Super glue can craze that clear plastic. That barely even needs glue. And then the medium size lens backing is that little guy there. And he just fits right into place too, just like this. Here are your three fully assembled lenses. Here are the pieces, nice and shiny and new. The gleam on these is tremendous. Let me take that lens out so you can see the shine on this. It's really nice. Before those two can go in, you've got to black those centers out. Here we are, all three lenses in position, looking really spectacular. Let's go ahead and light that lens up. All right, this is getting really exciting. Here is the LED hot glued in place. My on off switch is right here. Battery pack in the pocket. And let me give you a look at this lens. Really awesome. You can see, you can see that uh, lens array inside there. All those shapes. That's your 3D printed part for this kit. Really cool. Here's a look at these vents. Again, this these weren't painted. These are just inserts in here. Just so clean. And those walls are white inside there. Alright, let's get to work on the last step of this build and that's attaching the vertical scanner. The vertical scanner rides on these rails. I had to trim these down just a tiny bit. I think because my top coat is so thick, I had to trim them a little bit skinny and a little bit shorter. So they ride on those rails like this, top and bottom. This is a really spectacular piece. If you spend a little bit more time on those rails, you can probably make this so it slides back and forth. I'm just sort of making this static because these are in pretty tight, but I am very pleased with how this prop turned out. I mean, look at this beauty. And uh, I really can say this was a one day build. Uh, even though this paint cured overnight, uh, this was started less than 24 hours ago. Really pleased I'm able to share this with you guys. If you'd like to learn how to get one of these kits, just send me a message or visit my Facebook, Instagram, or website. And I hope I was able to teach you some skills with this one, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.